Hi everyone, welcome back to another Pro Tools tutorial and this time I thought we'd have a look at the surround panner. This is a two part video and the purpose of it isn't to describe the actual process of surround mixing but to give an overview of the Pro Tools surround panner itself and all of its controls. Obviously you'll be hearing this video in stereo but you should hopefully still get a good insight into what each of the controls does and how and when you might use them. I've created a simple session which only has a few tracks in it. As you can see, some are assigned to 5.1 channel outputs and some are assigned to 7.1 outputs. When I initially created this session, I was using an HD Omni with multiple outputs. For convenience whilst making this video though, I'm actually running the session through my computer's stereo line output and taking advantage of the automatic down mixing in Pro Tools 12 HD. This is a really handy feature and it means that if a session was started on a system with multi-channel outputs and it was subsequently moved to a system with just a stereo output, you can continue to work on the session without having to mess up any of the routing. This little right facing arrow in the output selector indicates that the output is being automatically down mixed. Anyway, let's take a look at the surround panner. If I go to the mix window, each track has a tiny representation of the panner here. It is actually possible to pan sound using this, but it's quite hard to get accurate panning, and whilst you can cycle through the various controls of the full surround panner by command clicking here, it's not particularly convenient. The full surround panner can be accessed by clicking on a track's output selector, either here in the mix window, or in the edit window if you've got the I.O. section displayed. This first track is assigned to a 5.1 output, and this is the 5.1 panner, so we've got left, center, right, left surround, and right surround channels. I'll come to the 7.1 panner later in this video. The Pro Tools surround panner has four modes of operation. You can cycle through these by clicking here, or click and hold to bring up a drop down menu, and you can choose from the options here. I'll start off by talking about the default panning mode, which is XY mode. In this mode, you can drag the pan location cursor, the green dot, anywhere within the grid to set its position. So if I wanted to pan the sound to the rear right speaker, I'd just drag the indicator there. This dot will be red when you're actually writing pan automation. If you happen to have access to a control surface with surround panning functionality, such as the Avid D control or S6, then you'll have a greater degree of control over the panning than you do just by dragging the mouse around. I'll probably talk more about the S6 in another video. So it's fairly simple to pan sounds by dragging them around this grid, but if I want to snap a sound to a particular location, I can't achieve that simply by clicking. As you can see, it doesn't snap there. To snap a sound to a location, command shift click and the panner will jump to that location. You can also get the sound to snap to any given speaker simply by clicking on the speaker icon itself. As with many controls in Pro Tools, you get finer control of the surround panner by holding down the command key. So let me just show you this. If I pan this without the command key held down, that's how it moves, hold down command, and for any given mouse move, it's a much finer range of movement in the panner. If you want to pan something in a straight line in either the X or Y axis, one way to do this is to hold down the shift key and drag the mouse. The direction in which you initially drag will determine the axis to which the movement is constrained. So for example, hold down shift, drag it forwards or backwards, and I can't now move left or right. Or hold down shift, drag left or right, and I can't now move backwards or forwards. You'll notice that when I do move the sound, the position controls below the grid move in a corresponding way. These can also be used to manoeuvre the sound, but they allow you to achieve things which can't quite be done in the same way when moving the position indicator. So for example, if I wanted to do a straight pan from say, front left to back right, it's difficult to get a dead straight line just by dragging the dot, or even if you've got a joystick panner. By setting the front position control to left and the rear to right, I can now use this front to rear control to pan the sound in a dead straight line. There is also actually one really important difference with doing it this way. I'm just going to run this sound, so we've got a mono sound on this track of a helicopter. Initially, I'll run it and I'll drag this sound across just by dragging the dot. Now watch this multi-channel output and what you'll see when I drag the sound is that across the course of the pan we get sound from all channels. Obviously it's difficult to fully represent this in stereo, but keep an eye on this uh, meter. So if I run this and I drag this sound, 
now you can see what's happening there is that it's finding its way into all the other speakers. That's fine, maybe that's what you want it to do, but now watch the same basic move, but done with the front to rear control. Keep an eye on the meters again. Okay, so as you can see from the meters, this mode allows you to pan discreetly between a pair of speakers without any of the others coming into play. Just do that one more time. You can see that's purely on the rear right channel. Use this control, none of the others come into play, and it goes directly to the front left channel. This actually brings me on to the second panning mode, which is three knob mode. So I can select this once again, either by clicking here and cycling through the various modes, or I can click and hold and select it from the drop down menu. The three position knobs behave the same way in this mode as they did in XY mode, so I can set them to determine the trajectory and then pan the sound using the front to rear control. However, I can also now modify the path by clicking at the start to determine the front position or clicking at the end to determine the rear position. Or I can retain the panning angle but move it over to the left or right by clicking near the middle of the line and just dragging it. In 3 knob mode you don't have the freedom to drag the pan position indicator wherever you like as you do in XY mode but you can click away from the line and drag the sound along the path. In part 2 of this video I'll be talking about the divergence controls, the LFE send control and the final two surround panning modes, divergence editing mode and auto glide mode.